In March, my hometown, New York City, became the epicenter of the COVID-19 virus. In response, Governor Cuomo completely shut the city down, and six months after the start of the shutdown, we're still living in a world full of restrictions. We've successfully extinguished the wildfire-like spread of the invisible virus, but what's left in its wake are many deaths and permanently shuttered businesses. 98% of employers in this great city are small businesses, and 3,000 of them are never coming back. Many of them are restaurants that I've come to love as a child, teenager, young adult, and as a mom. Six of those restaurants that aren't coming back, they're ours, part of our family business. Even now, in late August, restaurants are still operating at limited capacity. Takeout and delivery and outdoor dining only. We're at the mercy of Mother Nature. My staff and I have carried trays of food in the pouring rain, drenched to the bone. But it's what we can do to keep our doors open, to keep some of our staff employed, and to just keep surviving. We're New Yorkers. New Yorkers once again stepped up and banded together in our time of need. At the peak of the COVID-19 spread, many New Yorkers sewed masks to give to essential workers, like those working in grocery stores. Some restaurants partnered with nonprofits, like the Japanese American Association's Project Bento, to provide meals to the elderly and other vulnerable communities who couldn't go out to buy essentials. Other restaurants, like ours, we partnered with hospitals to provide meals to frontline workers who were working day and night to keep our loved ones alive. I myself delivered 1,640 curries to doctors and nurses in my community and in my network. It really is all about the people to people connections and I'm so proud to be a New Yorker.